weather modification, all of the development of the idea of geoengineering to save us from climate change, etc. Uh, again, there's a lot of d documentation that you've dug up on this over the years, but just fortuitously, in the last few days, I noticed that John Brennan, uh, the director of the CIA, was giving a speech at the Council on Foreign Relations of all places, where he himself was talking about geoengineering. So let's just listen to a little bit of that clip. And perhaps we can use this as a way to broach that subject of, would they really do something like this? Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. John Brennan talking about altering weather patterns and spraying things in the atmosphere in order to save us uh, from, from ourselves, apparently. Would they do something like this? Would they do it? I mean, the, the evidence shows that, yeah, they would and they have and they are. Um, as far as the CIA goes, uh, they appear to be deeply involved in, in the new Manhattan Project. There are some early documents uh, in 1965, the, uh, the office of uh, the executive uh, branch of the, of the federal government under LBJ released a document called Restoring the Quality of Our Environment that states both the theory of man-made global warming and what John Brennan was just talking about, the uh, SRM, uh, solar uh, radiation management spraying of uh, particles, uh, otherwise commonly known as geo geoengineering. The CIA also released a document which appears to be the fount of this idea that global warming can cause the end of humanity. And uh, ever since then, uh, you know, this has been used as, as a justification for uh, for spraying us because they're, they're, they're saying, you know, hey, we don't want global warming to happen. The, the earliest mention of the theory of man-made global warming that I've been able to find is in 1958, titled Weather as a Weapon. This project of weather modification largely came out of the original Manhattan Project. Uh, first of all, it is a, a physics problem and uh, the people who put together the first uh, atomic bombs were physicists. Uh, they uh, developed also a lot of uh, technology that, that went into uh, th this new Manhattan Project. What is new about the new Manhattan Project aspect of this? Well, uh, the, dif the differences between the original cloud seeding uh, industry, which goes on to this day, and the new Manhattan Project uh, is mostly the fact that, the, that electromagnetic energy is used to disperse the particles that come out of the airplane. And, uh, and, and also uh, conventional, conventional weather modification is done on a regional basis, and uh, the new Manhattan Project is done on a global basis. There's a certain Air Force base in Alaska, clear Air Force base, which is in the interior, I believe, near Fairbanks. And uh, it's, it's relatively close to the Harp facility. If you take a globe and, and look at where Alaska is, it's almost equidistant from the contiguous 48 states. Uh, to and, and then to uh, the most industrialized areas of Asia. You, you know, you've been seeing chemtrails over there in Japan. And, uh, and then to Europe. It's very strategically located. All of this talk about geoengineering that has become more and more common in congressional committees and prominent scientists speaking out about this, David Keith and others are going around pimping this idea everywhere they go. And yet, there is remarkably little research or even apparently interest in the, the medical or health effects, or at least potential effects, of stratospheric aerosol injection. And you uh, pointed um, you, uh, to a, a, a journal article that I hadn't seen from earlier this year, assessing the direct occupational and public health impacts of solar radiation management with stratospheric aerosols. 
if you were to spray aluminum oxide aerosols or barium uh, titanate or any of these other uh, chemicals on people, it might be a really bad thing as they end up concluding. Um, although we don't know because no one's researching it. Actually, the health impacts and the biological impacts have, have been studied extensively, but these studies have just not been made public. The biological impacts are what we've seen are grave. You know, this, this is mass murder. You know, and, and I, I make a case for that as far as Alzheimer's goes. We're talking hundreds of thousands of people who, who have died. These are extra deaths that have just suddenly popped up. You know, and we're supposed to go, uh, you know, go for a run or, uh, you know, donate money to this or that and, and you know, find a cure when, when what we really should be looking at is the cause. And uh, so it's just, it's just layer upon layer of cover up. L'accusa di complottismo rivolta disinvoltamente a quanti fanno informazione non tenendo conto della propaganda occidentale a senso unico ha avuto un duro colpo. I timori che avevamo infatti circa la nocività delle sostanze chimiche che venivano poco per volta rilasciate dalle scie chimiche bianche che ogni tanto apparivano in cielo erano fondati e ad affermarlo è un professore che lavora alla NASA Douglas Roland il quale in un'intervista registrata quindi tutto documentato ha candidamente detto che sì l'agenzia per la quale lavora la NASA appunto è solita attraverso aerei appositamente attrezzati rilasciare nell'atmosfera grandi quantità di litio. Il litio che cos'è? È un elemento chimico metallico che da qualche decennio viene utilizzato anche in Italia dai medici psichiatri. È una sostanza che, di cui non si conosce molto. I medici non sanno attraverso quali meccanismi agisce sui pazienti, né conoscono esattamente la quantità ottimale da somministrare ai malati. Restano semplicemente i risultati che pare siano buoni, riequilibrano, tendono a tranquillizzare e così via. Ma noi ci domandiamo, e eh, qui è il caso di dire, siamo in un mondo di pazzi, perché una sostanza così pericolosa viene anche utilizzata quale piccolo componente nelle bombe termonucleari, le bombe H, non può rilasciare indiscriminatamente nell'atmosfera dare buoni risultati. La scusante della NASA è che eh, lavora per la scienza. E insieme a questi esperimenti con litio ne fanno altri di vaccinazioni di massa, sempre attraverso l'aerosol che lentamente piove dal cielo. Ci sono delle popolazioni utilizzate come cavie senza che ne siano a conoscenza di ciò che viene tramato i loro danni, né mai nessuno ha rilasciato delle autorizzazioni. Certo la questione delle strisce che ogni tanto appaiono in cielo, col piccolo aereo che le rilascia, non potevano essere ulteriormente taciute. E diffidenti come siamo, abbiamo il sospetto che questo professor Douglas Roland eserciti una sorta di azione tranquillizzatrice. In sostanza... C'è chi ama fare tutto ciò che gli conviene di più, perché al fondo se andiamo a scasare c'è sempre una ragione economica. È il governo italiano, ma il governo italiano succubo, come degli Stati Uniti, tace e concede.